So really pleased to be getting all this treated. It's a pretty quick job, but it's like everything, you just have to do it. kind of got this thing where I like to just get the whole lot done at once there's no point in coming back and doing two or three um, half treatments so I'll do the whole apiary I've done all of this lot which is about 60 nukes there and I've done obviously my mini nukes behind the truck and I've also done that apiary up there so the whole of this area has been treated and what you got to remember is if you don't treat everything all at once and you leave some colonies any that die and rob out will reinfect the others through mites passing on. So the other problem with this apiary is it was very difficult to get the timings dead right for the treatment of oxalic acid, because um, ideally we bring all the nukes here at the same time. We maybe wait till all the brood had hatched, then we treat with vaporized oxalic acid. But as usual, um, you don't make all your, all your nukes at the same time. You do it over three or four weeks because it's just impossible otherwise, unless you've got some extra staff, which I don't happen to have the, the luxury of. Um, so you've got brood appearing and reappearing at different times. So you just have to, um, I think, really vape as soon as you can, but when you've got enough on site. But that didn't work this year either. So what I've done is I'm going to do probably three or four treatments over the next um, three weeks. And that will hopefully, as the brood starts to hatch out of the new queens, that will hopefully control all the mites that are um, appearing. Regarding the other apiaries, it's a different ball game because I've, I've organised a brood break for the majority of the colonies. There is other colonies in the apiary that haven't had a brood break in many. Some, some have got three or four in each apiary, so I'm going to have to come back. I've marked those with a big marker, so I know exactly where, so I can quickly come in and treat them. But they're going to be treated as well as oxalic acid for three or four times over the three weeks. So it's, it's a lot more work, to be honest, than you might do by just sticking in uh, um, some Amitraz strips or MAQs. And I know MAQs are, are pretty attractive because they also... Um, are, are technically um, uh, done, done and dusted within 10 days, which is even good. I mean, I, I'm not saying I won't go back to Amitraz one year and use Apivar strips, but the cost uh, for each colony, it's two euros 50 per strip for us here. And to treat one hive is five euros because you need two strips. So for me, I'm looking at minimum of a thousand euros just on treatments. And with apibioxal, which is obviously the, ox the oxalic acid, it's considerably cheaper. So, um, considerably cheaper, but the work is there. But when you've got a good system and you can come, as I say, and do a lot in one apiary at one time, it really, I think, is a good option. So I'm going to treat all my colonies and then I'm going to treat them all again in November. And um, I mentioned this last year when I was talking about oxalic acid. There is a really good video out on the National Honey Show by a guy who's done quite a lot of work on when are colonies actually broodless. And I'll try and put the link up in the description of this video when I find it again. But it, it just highlights the fact that no one's really completely sure. But it looks like the evidence points towards the majority of colonies being the most broodless right at the end of the autumn as they go into winter and it's that period um for instance when ian stepler puts his in his winter shed um the, the bees kind of know they get right to that low point where the flow stops they're kind of getting much colder nights and the queen almost shuts down temporarily and he does his oxalic acid vaping then and they're virtually broodless then 
which is interesting. I don't know whether he knew that or whether he worked it out, but he always gets a really good cleanup of any remaining mites at that time of year. And I think oh, in the past, I've missed the boat on that issue where I spent a lot of time um, waiting and thinking, well, I wait till the brooders because there's always going to be a few mites at the end of the summer, but you should do it really October, November for us or any time, just keep doing those treatments because oxalic acid treatments uh, throughout the year have proven to have a, uh, a combined effect. And it's, it's also becoming apparent, and I'm not gonna say where I've heard this, but there's evidence to say now that act oxalic acid within the hive um, in the form of these new strips is looking very, very promising. That's having a long-term effect on the ability of the varroa to reproduce which is the most important thing, obviously. We don't want varroa in the hives. We want to get them and we want to keep their numbers down as low as we can. And we have to, because if you don't get your organized, your, organize your treatments in August, you won't have many bees left the following spring. August is the key month. And I'm perhaps a little bit late, but the whole season's a little bit late this year, which has, uh, which has kind of put everything back a little bit, but we've got great weather. And as you saw, there's a little bit of breeze now, so it's too breezy to do the oxalic acid treatment. Now I've got, these nukes have a very, very small ventilation strip with a grill underneath. So I give them 1.5 to two grams because I'm happy to do that, even though they only need 1.5 grams. It just gives them a little bit extra just to stay in the colony for, for a little bit longer. But overall, when you treat them first thing in the morning and it's completely calm, which it is at the moment, I can only treat in the mornings, but we're getting two hours of treatment, which is pretty good. So I've done a lot of nukes today. Um, if you do treat first thing in the morning, it's calm and they get a really good uh, uh, treatment. I'm seeing bees come out that are completely ghost white, which is what I hear. And you're hearing the roar and it's circulating in the colony, More, um, especially up on the big colonies further up there. The other good news is still we're not seeing any Asian hornets in the apiaries. So because I did brood breaks, the colonies are a little bit weaker when I come to release the queen. And that's going to help me this year, not having the, the, the Asian hornets predating the bees outside or losing bees while they're foraging. Big bonus. And the other thing is, um, within another three weeks, two to three, three weeks now, we should start to see the start of the ivy. And that will stop any, um, any robbing. It should bring that to an end. And that, that means we really will, st we'll, we're starting to feed now for the autumn as I go through each apiary and release the queens and harvest the honey, which I've nearly finished as well. So I'm almost up to speed. I've got about five apiaries left to pull. I put bee escapes back on yesterday afternoon when I came back yesterday, well, the night before, back straight back out yesterday. I'm gonna pull that honey tonight, but I also will be out this afternoon putting extra bee escapes on so I can pull that honey tomorrow night. So you just gotta keep putting bee escapes on, keep putting bee escapes on, take the old ones off. And if, what I was gonna say was as soon as I take the old one's off, I'm going in, checking those queens are laying and giving them that feed, the first feed. Now the second and third feeds I'm gonna give, I'm starting thymol feeding next week. So it's syrup thymolized, uh, which helps against mite control as well. And it helps, they say, clean the bees through. They don't always take it down, but it works. I think it works really well and, and helps your winter preparation. And there's good evidence to say that does help against mites. So I'm changing my strategy, but you've got to remember for me this year is my first year changing my queens to give them a forced brood break. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect at all. I just feel I had to try something and I want to try something to say I've done it and this is what I found. And I'm going to put a video together of the results and how I exactly how I did it. So you guys can see uh, over the winter months, but I won't do it until October, November. So I've got a bit of time and time is the essence right now. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm not sure what I've done is the correct thing. I'm pretty sure I've got it reasonably right, but what I'm talking about is process, protocol. You know, when you release the queen, do you do it after you harvest the honey or before? I know it sounds like a, a stupid thing to say, but it's all, all the things that when you're a professional beekeeper and you're doing 200 colonies, you've got to work to a routine and a protocol that works with you so that you get the best results at the end. Because coming back to feed, you have to have everything off and everything ready so you can put um, feeders on. And it's another thing we've done this year is we've made sure that all our colonies have a feeder on throughout the year. Not actually 
on the bees, but within or next to the hive or on the hive, but under the roof so that we don't have to worry about moving it around. And if we need to feed a colony, we can. And also if you've got colonies, for instance, in early spring that you haven't got to in time, you can put the feeder on when they start to grow after giving them space. And if they need to expand, they often expand into the feeder. It's a really good little tool, the feeder. And we really feel that um, through in the production colonies, it's, it's a no brainer. You have to have a feeder for everyone for so many reasons. And once it's on, it stays with the colony because well, before we were we were almost creating an, a disease implication where if you were taken off your feeders once a year and taking them back and not cleaning them but they don't really need cleaning but technically they could carry they might need scraping off a bit but unless you blowtorch them which you can't because they're all plastic most of them are plastic now we were creating a possible transfer of disease another vector within our equipment so it, by, by leaving a feeder on our colonies all year, we're getting, getting rid of that problem. So they're all little things we're doing and we're learning. Um, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna be doing this now for the next, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna be doing this now for the next two to three weeks till everything has had a treatment until all the queens are released and it's gonna take a lot of time. But I really don't mind because I know that if I go into the winter knowing there's a good chance most of my colonies will survive, that's what matters. And it's the work I said I was going to put in this year that I wasn't able to do last year. So it's a real bonus for me. So anyway, all positive. The honey harvest is pretty poor. As I said, we're still averaging about 40 to 60 kilos in some apiaries. Some a little bit less, some a little bit more. So it's about 40 to 60 kilos. It's absolutely nothing. Um, people are knocking on my door asking me for honey in, in, in bulk. And I said, I just haven't got it for sale. So uh, it is what it is, as we say. So anyway... I um, hope you have the rest of the good weekend and next week's another week to get stuck into work and do different things. So take care. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.